Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grip Lock Foundation Disc Golf Weekly Podcast. I'm Hunter, joined as always by Trevor. Today's episode is presented by Flippy Disc Golf, just like the tour we're on, the West Coast tour. We're not exactly on the West Coast right now. We're in Ogden, Utah, but it's a part of our West Coast tour. So yeah, we're going to say we're on the West Coast for the you know sake of this. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, before we get into today's episode, we're going to talk through a little Patreon question of the week. Portland Open just went down. Uh, Paul's start to his European tour at the Estonian Open. We'll have a little Trevor's trivia, and then we'll round it out with some power rankings. Um, but before we get into all that, here's a quick word from our sponsors. Today's podcast is proudly sponsored by Double G Craft Jerky. Uh, they're a huge supporter of our tour while we're out here. We love Craft Double G Jerky. Yeah, on the t-shirt there. Um, they make delicious jerky and not only just beef jerky anymore. Um, they also do trail mix and dried fruit. We've been enjoying that while out on tour. Fantastic stuff. We've been, uh, giving out some jerky to people. People have been loving it. They have great flavors such as teriyaki, Sexton sweet and spicy. They've got original, they've got a garlic lovers, a uh, ton of great flavors. Um, every bag sold contributes to the, uh, double G children's foundation, which, it, um, it helps the promotion of disc golf to the youth. Uh, they also offer a one ounce bag that's really awesome for players pack. So, so you can get some, you know, that's a great players pack. Have a snack out on the course. They do subscriptions as well. So if you want to have jerky delivered, you can do three, six or 12 month uh, options with as many bags as you'd want. So make sure to t- check out Double G Jerky. You can get 10% off with code foundation at checkout. Get 10% off your order. Make sure to give it a check out. It is a. Uh, the best disc golf snack out there and thanks for sponsoring double g as always also you may see me wearing their hats quite often especially on this tour you can get the hats on the site as well so remember 10 percent off code foundation all right like i said we're on the west coast tour right now we've been to portland we did our battles in portland and then we did our battles in boise um and we stopped at kennewick washington in between both of those and then we stopped at twin falls idaho this morning and yeah. now we're in Ogden, Utah. I'll be doing some battles here in Ogden tomorrow. Um, it's been great meeting a lot of you. Uh, we've had some decent spectators. Well, the spectators were awesome. Decent amount of spectators at every battle. Uh, and, you know, it's been it's been great. It's been a ton of fun. And we're, we're stoked to be out here. Um, we're going to start off with the Patreon question of the week. Um, this one actually came from Cade Evans. It's one of the best questions we've ever been asked. If you're not sure what the Patreon question of the week is, it comes from our Heiser Club mailbag. Our Heiser Club is what we call our Patreons. You can actually get a 30-day free trial right now. You go to patreon.com slash foundation disc golf, and we do a Q&A show every week, every Friday, called the mailbag. And that's what this question came from, one of the best of all time, in my opinion. Mm. Cade said, if you could go back in time and change the result of one pro tour or major, what change do you think would have the biggest effect on today's game? It's basically mm-hmm. like... If you could change anything about disc golf history on the pro tour major scale, um, what would it be that would have the biggest effect? The answer I gave, I'm sticking with. I'll give you a chance to change yours. I'm sticking with, I think that it would be if you changed 2014 world results, you had Ricky Wysocki win. Because obviously Ricky won in 2016, 2017. Paul won 2012 through 2015. So Paul was a four time there. If Ricky won 2014, It'd be interesting to see if he broke up Paul's streak after two, then Ricky won there. If Ricky could pull off 2015, he, Ricky could have went four in a row. And instead mm-hmm. of it being Paul with the four time and Ricky the two time, it could have been Paul the two time and Ricky the four time. You know, I got a new answer. And it'd be fascinating. Actually. My new answer, and this one, I think, I, I ultimately think somewhere in the middle of Paul's streak, like 2014 or I even said before like 2012 or 13 like what if he never got his first right there or never what if he never won a back-to-back and he never started a streak but I think an interesting one would be what if Paul won 2016 worlds what if he got mm, six he got in a five. row or That'd five, five in, in a row, row rather um would he have won 17 like how long would the streak have continued if he had gotten that an extra one in a row and uh, would Ricky have a major at all? That's at true. At that point, like would he have? Because 2016 was Ricky's first was in Emporia. Mm-hmm. Ricky's sev- second, 2017 was in Georgia, mm-hmm. um, and Paul was right in both of them. Paul's obviously coming second at every Worlds, literally since 2012, second or first, right? For the last 10 years running, I think so. Um, That's so crazy. yeah, so if Paul would have won 2016. Like, would we be talking about? Would had he have had? Would, would he have lost at this point? <laughs> like, yeah, it'd be would fascinating. He, how many? Because how many could he have had? He could have had eleven. Would he have won the Estonian Open or ten? He'd be had a 10 he 
won 2016 worlds yeah would he would he not have taken 31st out <laughs> well, let's there? talk about that in a second um but great <laughs> patreon question let us know your answers to the patreon question of the week i bet in there's the some really good below. answers out there that we don't even know yeah you let know us also, know so basically how it works is you just pick a different result to any pro tour or major win that would have the biggest effect on disc golf today so whatever you think that is can be a negative effect a positive effect or just a different effect like i don't think Ours are net negative There's or net probably positive. Some answers but. that like only pros know. Like guys be like, yeah, I was like vi- thinking about retiring. Like what if yeah. what if Clem was like, yeah, I was gonna retire after my sixth title, but then. Like, because I won, I decided to keep playing in 1-6 more. Like, I wonder if there's any stories like that. Or if that. there's been times where, like, a company's put pressure on a player, like a contract. Like, you know what? Why don't we see what happens this weekend and come back? And then they go out and win. Yeah. I don't know. Something to think about. All right. Portland Open went down. A lot of storylines from Portland Open. We'll break as many as we can down. I'm going to be straight up, up front with our audience. We're very close with our audience. We're clearly on the West Coast right now. You can tell we're chilling, not in our studio. We've been traveling a heck of a lot, so not much coverage has been consumed. Um, Speak for yourself, but I've bro. picked up. That's true. Trevor got to watch it on the car I, ride today I got, while I was driving. I got driving. to watch the entire final round today. So, yeah. so Trevor least... will have a lot of important context. I've been following the storylines via Twitter, Reddit, stuff like that. Um, so if you're commenting and you're pissed off, because Hunter's been driving for like the every single day. He's it, either been playing disc golf or driving, so it, don't don't blame Hunter. If you if you're <laughs> commenting right now, how the frick did you not talk about Paige Pierce's round one hole sixteen whatever? I didn't see it. That's how I'm not talking about he was it. On but the way to Portland results. So Adam Ham is one in a playoff over Aaron Gossage. I did get to watch that. I did get to watch probably the most important part of the round. Well, obviously it seems the most important to me, but the no, whole I, finishing finishing of hole 18 through the playoff. I got to see. Yeah. Corey Ellis came in third, and then on FPO we had Kristen Tatar taking it down. Sayananda coming in second. Own Scoggins and Juliana Corver tying in. Uh, for third now Kristen reestablished her dominance here is a pretty dominant win stroke wise yeah. um which not that there was a question mark but she did just like take a little you break. Had a question mark dude you picked page to win i picked page to win because i <laughs> it wasn't necessarily a question mark of like you know large it was more was mark. like was page back yeah answer was no it well, wasn't questioning yeah. Kristen. she didn't drop a bomb out there or anything, no she, she came in she was in fourth i believe she was right she outside. She was pretty far off the pace. But she was far Everybody off the pace. Everybody was pretty Everyone far off the, far pace. Off the pace. So Kristen reestablished her dominance there. She It, it wasn't uh, necessarily like a must-do thing. Like if she she just took a quick break, went home, came back, Kristen's and the she's type back. of player who's like so just casually amazing right now and just making a bag that it wouldn't surprise me if she comes over to the States. Go ahead and do me a favor right now and figure out how much the U.S. dollar is worth in Estonia. Go ahead and figure is she it out. In, is she from Estonia? Yes. All right, give me one second. Um, I'm almost 100 percent positive about that. Uh, I would be would not yes, be surprised. She is. I see the flag. Yeah, I would not be surprised if Kristen came over here. Like, what? I don't know how long her deal is. A, she's it's on a, a four. euro. They're basically equal. Okay, never mind. That was well. In any case, even with that being said, I wouldn't be surprised if she came over here and played, dominated, and then at like age 36, just dipped and retired, and just like because she's gonna make a lot of money. She's gonna make a lot of money. She probably and that she'll probably make a million million and a half maybe two wouldn't surprise me over what how many years are you saying that that she's making that no, no I, I think well, what is her deal right now she's making how much a year 125,000 125k no she I, signed I, a four I think, year 500,000 I think deal. I think I think her next contract is she, big is big and then after that like it wouldn't surprise me she signs a big deal for a few years and then dips like earlier than people think I, I can feel see like, that. I feel like she's just like kind of low. I don't key. know. She is very passionate. Like she, the wins mean a lot to her. They do. And I think that. Yeah, uh, I don't think she doesn't care. I just, uh, I get that vibe from her that she might just like play. I could and see it though. Because she does have a, she's like, I've won everything. I've made a ton of money. She does I'm, have a, a daughter, here. a semi young daughter. Somebody like Kristen, you could go back to Estonia or even stay in the states and like coach. No, oh, yeah. Or and or something like that. They, they're involved in a coaching business, I believe, over there. Yeah. Her and Silver. Um, Silver, that's now, story. another thing I thought was fascinating, I wrote this down, and I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty positive that the top four, because there's, well, really top three, but there's four of them in there, are from four different decades, I'm pretty sure. Sayanada's in her 20s, Kristen's in her 30s, Owen's in her 40s, and I'm pretty sure Juliana Corver's in her 50s. Oh my gosh, is Owen not in her 50s yet? I'm pretty sure she's in her 40s. I think she can play, I think she plays FP She's 40. getting really close. That is a fascinating stat, though. I, I did stat Mando not tweet that. Did you come up with that? I think I saw someone on Discord come up with <laughs> like it. Like surely, 
Um, why would I just go to her PDGA as if it would say her age? Yeah, we need a good, we need like a reliable place to find this stuff. We need famousbirthdays.com to get on it. Own Scoggins, age. We found found this before. In 2022, she was, that's Sarah Hogan. That's no good. Okay, but this is probably going to tell us in here. Okay. Um, I just have to scroll through every competitor at 2022 Worlds, so. There you go. Just give me a second here. I believe in you. <laughs> I feel like she's probably like she might be like forty eight or forty nine. She was forty one, so she's now oh. forty two. Oh, she's not that old. Okay, she's just in her forties. I thought for some reason she was a lot older than that. No, because you know what? It was a storyline that she could now play FP forty. Okay, wow. Well, okay, Good she just made a Masters. That um, is a crazy little stack up there. Then. Now, before we get into the uh, rest of MPO again, the, before we get into the rest of MPO, well, something else that might never happen again. Nate Sexton's cash streak's officially over. Decades. He long. missed the cut. Missed cash. Uh, it was 15 years long, 264 events. He started it when he was 22, finished it when he was 38. And I think I saw, but his, it was 15 years. I think I saw his average cash out was like 700, 700 bucks. bucks, which is really good in disc golf, considering especially when you consider. Yeah, he spans back to years yeah, ago. 2000, granted, he won, 2008, I think. And and Sexton won 12 grand at USDDC, but beyond that. He hasn't been like a serial winner at the highest level. No, but he had that good stretch where he was just like he finished but in sixth he, place. But right, he's ca- but it was it was in a like 2015 era where sixth place really wasn't well. making you Sexton, a ton of money. Yeah, I, and I, you know what? It's very funny that this is the course that he lost his streak in because it's near his home, 30 miles from where it began. I think someone he, said. No, I think it was. I think it was less than that. Was I think, it? I think it was like it was like a few miles or something. I don't know. It was close, but um. It's crazy because like I feel like the course favored, it favored forehand play. Uh, I think we saw that with who ended up, other than Corey Ellis, not a huge forehand guy, but we see that with Gossage and Ham has had his forehand working, um, and also it favored really strategic golf and Sexton's good at that. It's Sexton so, golf. So I'm very. He must have just had an off. He had a bad weekend. He had a bad weekend, and like Sexton isn't you know going all out on tour all the time anymore. So like that just can happen to you. Like there's just enough guys that'll lap you in the field, but. Crazy streak. Will anyone come close to this ever again? 15-year-long cast, cast streak? Surely not. I, With how diverse the field's getting? The, yeah, the problem is, too, like, if you go to your lo- – it depends on your scene, but in, even in your local scenes these days, there's well, just so I'm, many I'm people. Well, I'm including – I'm saying tour. Oh, heck no. Because he's been touring for 15 – not fully heck. touring, but he's been playing on tour for 15 years. Heck no. Like, it's one thing if I just played C tiers for 15 years, you know what I'm saying? But to be playing tour events – mixed in for 15 years and you keep that cash streak alive and like yeah. he had a few years of full touring no that's true like i think uh at this point to be honest with you a like full season long cash streak is starting to be something to be proud of well sure like if you're fully touring yeah because like every even the best players have bad events where yeah they'll like, take like a 50th or something yeah, yeah if you're fully touring and you cash for an entire season that's impressive now yeah, I'd be curious, 15 of them I'd is a whole nother level how many guys have that streak right now for this season like how many of them have not have not missed cash this season uh, we'd be able to find that but i don't have my computer it's probably not so but it, it's not gonna be a long list not as long as, list as you would think yeah. i would bet i would bet we'll have to look it up at post episode but i'm gonna bet like 15 guys yeah that sounds about right um now next storyline moving up the leaderboard a little bit but not all the way to the top aaron gossage unable to pull it off despite multiple chances to win realistically um I, I mean, his day is obviously coming. He feels to me because he, he it's been multiple times that he's put himself into position where yeah. he could win or should win, um, even going back to Worlds yeah. last year, and he just can't quite pull it out. A lot of the times, I'm heck, I'm gonna say most of the time, it is to due to his own doing, um, is and I, it reminds me a little bit of Eagle a few years ago, yeah, where Eagle kept gaining that position and he just couldn't close the deal, and then once he did. He kind of broke out. Only difference here is I don't think Aaron Gossage has as well rounded as a game as Eagle, being no. forehand dominant, backhand complementary. His backhand is getting really um, good, though. I'm it is say. getting really good, but I think that he's still a little bit of a course specialist. Um, he's not fully like he's not a Chandler Kramer where if it's a backhand course at all, he's out of it. Aaron Gossage can hold his yeah. own. Oh yeah. Um, but he is a, he's going to lean a little bit more to that forehand side. But I I I mean, what do you think? I think similar to to older Eagle, where his day is coming and he could pop off. You know, he could win one or two this season. Yeah. Um, or over the next few seasons. He, yeah, I think he's really good. I because like when I first 
saw Gossage play. Like you saw, you always see like his forehand is tremendous. He throws Heiser flip forehand so well. Um, but I, I'm really impressed with his backhand. His backhand, like he's throwing some really far, like nice flex line backhands, especially at these courses in Portland. Uh, he was hitting gaps really well, like throwing an, and like I saw him choose backhand in ch- places he could have chose forehand. And that to me is somebody who's confident in their backhand. He's just missing a putt. Um, he made a lot of good putts in the final round, but his putt is still very stabby. It's not very fluid and it's nervy. He looks he's very nervy. He looks nervy from th- and I know he's been struggling with the yip. So even what he's been able to do considering how nervy his putting is, it's very impressive where he's been finishing um, because, you know, even 30 footers to him right now are look very stressful and he's hitting a lot of like, I mean, that final round, that, that man hit every part of the chains that you could. And a lot of them caught because like, we'll talk about the finish in a second and like people will talk about his spit out. Uh, but he threw a lot of putts that were not great that caught because he's kind of all over the place. The putt it's, it's a stabby, like very, uh, Heisery putt, uh, but the rest of his game is there right now. It just you just got to put the rest, put it together. And he was making a lot of putts, uh, but I don't, it's I don't see it as a consistent thing for him right now. Yeah. Now the putt. So I had to go back and rewatch this because I didn't see anything. I just jumped in on eighteen, and how eighteen went down from where I jumped in. Hammers was already ob. I didn't see that. I jump in. And 18 is just finishing up, and they go back and replay kind of what happened. So they showed um, Aaron Gossage throwing his 100, he's about 150 feet out. No reason he should get up, shouldn't get up and down. Yeah. Realistically, oh gosh, no. um, he just needs wired. to get up and down. Completely, wired. gets up and down. He wins. Adam Ham is sitting at about 60 ish feet. Yeah, he rolled out out of bounds. Um, he threw a roller to go for eagle, and then went out of bounds. Yeah, there. so he had about a 60 ish footer. Aaron Gossage fluffs his up shot to what 30. I think it's safe to say. Yeah, it was, I was 27, it, it 30. Was, yeah, I was pretty pushing 30. It was a pretty far uh, uphill as well, elevated basket. Yeah. Adam Hammond steps up. Bang it. Basically, do or die. Realistically, he's probably also, well, I don't know. He, he might be thinking Aaron Gossage probably isn't making this putt, but either way, he knows he has he to make that putt I if, mean, if he wants a chance. Well, it's ultimate big putt situation. You, yeah. see, you see a guy who... All he had to do was get up and down, leaves himself a tester, which is already making him nervous. And now you're thinking, oh, if I make this putt, he's going to poop his pants. Like, yeah. That's, yeah. And so props to Adam Ham as he steps up and banged it. Aaron Gossage couldn't couldn't do it. Missed it. They go to the playoff hole. Playoff hole, Adam Ham is, ends up being the guy to tee off first. Turns his drive over a bit too much. He's safe. He's fine. He goes really but far, he's got he's trouble. Really, he's really far down there. That he's was got his, like probably like 200 feet in. He's in... He's got. He has to think about it more than you would want on that hole. Yeah, he's, but a, he's kind of a little bunch of trees. He can get up and down. Aaron Gossage throws, flips it up a little bit more than I think he wanted, but it still was in the middle. It was, yeah, it fine. was fine. Only trouble was there was you could tell he was very uncomfortable with the left to right wind, so he wanted to go forehand. He kept lining up the forehand, and that wind made it where he ended up like like he was a solid Philo on commentary. I don't know how they portrayed it in on Jomez, but. During live, Philo on commentary was like, he better watch the clock because like he's pushing very <laughs> close to 30 seconds. Like he was staying over that live for a long time. Ain't no way anybody was calling that no. on the playoff. Eventually decides to go to the backhand, leaves yeah. himself short again. Now this was about three hundred some a feet really out. Really hard shot and a really tough yeah. green as well. But leaves himself short again, misses the putt. Adam Ham is put himself to probably circle's edge, twenty seven foot. I think I think Gossage was forty. Hammers was thirty. Is what they said on live yeah, coverage. I don't Go- know if that's accurate. And Gossage but. chose to not step his putt through just a straight up putt, missed it low, and then uh, or no, it was just it was left. He chained it, splashed it a little bit out, but he yeah. it wasn't a good putt. Uh, and yeah. Hammers wins. He just bangs yeah. the putt again. So back to back, very clutch putts from Adam Hammers to take it down. Yeah. Um. And first off, Portland Open elite first elite plus event of the year, first elite pl- plus event we've ever seen. One of the big things is increased purses um adam hammis took home twelve thousand five hundred dollars <laughs> for the win Woo. 
What did second take? Eight thousand dollars. Four grand. So forty five hundred bucks difference. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. So one hundred and fifty foot upshot cost Aaron Gossage four thousand five hundred dollars. <laughs> uh, Corey Ellis oh took home gosh. five grand. Um, yeah, it was, he, a, it was a good good payout. There was some money to be fought for up there because Corey Ellis was in it till to the last hole as well. His roller didn't make it as far up as as Ham is. Like, yeah, because they both were going for eagle. And you know, I was like, man, this could really turn Adam Ham as a season around. And then I was like, I don't really know much about Adam Ham as a season. Let me go look at it. Mm, yeah, Sneaky good. Really? Let's see. Um, it. It's kind of sleeper. So starting at Vegas 30th. Meh. Second at Waco, which I've already forgot about. Yeah. Came in second at Waco. 19th and open in Austin. Silver event came in 40th at Texas States. Music City Open 11th. 40th at Champions Cup. 44th at Jonesboro. 13th at OTB. DNF, I believe, at Beaver State. It looks like. I mean, 111th. I'm assuming it's a DNF. And then 15th at Cascade. And then a win. Uh, I'm not going to say better that's than I thought. I, I, I think th- Adam I Hammes, thought he wasn't relevant. I was yeah. thinking he just came out of irrelevancy. Well, it's a, if you're out of him, as though, like, I feel like he is not a player who, like, I mean, what did I, what did I, I won top 10 this year? Is that what I just heard at Waco? Is his only uh, top 10? Top 10 now? won several top 15s. I, I just like, I, I feel like he should be a player who's competing more consistently. And, and here's the thing. When his game is at his best, and when he's playing his best, it's typically when he's making a lot of circle two putts. Uh, he is very, he's so well rounded. His backhand is super good, really good forehand, and his putting can just be lethal. Honestly, what I saw in that final round, and I wonder if this has been kind of the theme for him this year, he did throw some like pretty shockingly bad shots in situations that could have cost him drastically. Most notably, this is on. Um, hole 16 I believe it was one of the holes down the stretch you know he was still on the pace uh, with the lead and had a jump he was throwing a jump up shot uh, from couldn't have been more than 100 feet out and just chucked it into a tree kicked himself to 30 feet and missed it like just like chucked it away and like he was head in his hands at this point like thought he had lost it yeah uh, and that, because that's what forced him to have to play aggressive on 18 because then you know the, it just looked like I mean was Ian on the mic Ian and I'd, Philo were. I'd, I I'd, I'd have to know. Philo called it over on 18. Okay. I, someone tweeted that. I didn't see it, but apparently when, when Ham is when OB. his roller OB. Which, in that case, you can never call it over. I just love the That name. late in the round, with Gossage 150 feet up, you, you can understand. And when I tuned in, to be fair, they were baffled. And multiple times I heard Philo go... I mean, you cannot miss 150. Like, if you want to do anything on this tour, you got to get up and down 150 feet. Philo <laughs> well, just kept saying that. It's I was just like, because, like, right. body language, like, after missing that jump up, like, up and down, and then after his roller going out of bounds, which is, like, that is, like, a little more... That's a tough shot. But, like, he was, like, on the ground, like, as if he, like, he thought he threw it away. And, like, yep. that's all I was saying. I was like, oh, I know Ian is just, like, <laughs> leaning into it right now. Yeah, Ian's probably like, and that's it. And you're like, it's all two. Uh, um... Yeah, but he, props to Adam Hammes overall played very solid and I'll took it down. Yeah, well, guess what? Now his season looks great. Yeah, he has a win. He has <laughs> a win, which a win not a lot of other people do, and a really nice one, twelve and a half grand. Woo. Yeah. Um, now Stat Mando just tweeted this minutes before we started recording. I quote tweeted it: "Pot stirred. Consider the pot stirred." And this just farther, to in my opinion, reiterates my point from last week. This is a tweet it's from Stat Mando. Brody Smith has back-to-back top 15 finishes on tour for the first time in his career. 11th at the Portland Open, 15th at the Cascade Challenge. Smith is now ranked 37th in the world, his best ranking of his career. First off, shout out to Brody. He has qualified for USDGC and the European that? Open. Because I, I looked this morning and I saw 44th. What are they using? Hit their world rankings? They're probably using their world rankings, yeah. Okay. They d- probably are. Fair enough. Um, this is exactly what I'm talking about, though. If we're going to say, if we're going to call silver events, elite series, elite plus events... Mm-hmm all the same thing then why do we have silver events elite events elite plus events just let the field strength determine what people care about and don't care about and the purses if we're calling it the tour then just call, then it's just the tour just call it the disc golf pro tour but if the pro tour is going to tell us in marketing and tell the players by purses and tell the players by we're not putting as many resources into these events hey these silver events don't matter as much then us as fans shouldn't put them on the same level as an elite plus event which the tour is telling us hey, this is the event you should care the most about. Yeah. So therefore, we shouldn't be calling them all tour events. I understand he technically has back-to-back top 15 finishes on tour. Yes, but that's misleading. And that's what I tweeted. And people, 
people are saying I'm an idiot. And I'm like, you know what? That's fine. You can think what you think, but I know how I think and I stand by it. I think that's a very misleading tweet. <laughs> I, that winds you up a lot. I no, I, I, I just get I winded up that people act like it's a baffling take. Like, how could you possibly think that? No, and I'm I, like, I think it's misleading. It's pretty straightforward. I think it's misleading. The Pro Tour is telling us we're putting less resources, less money in the purses, less coverage, weaker field at silver events. Well, everybody can. We're putting all our resources more into coverage, all of this, trying to get as strong a field as ever at Elite Plus event. And we're just calling it both tour events. If we're calling it both tour events, throw the silver and all that out the window. Just have it all be the tour. That's like the PGA Tour doesn't have PGA Tour, PGA Tour Plus, PGA Tour Silver. It's just the PGA Tour. And some events have a smaller purse and they're weaker. And some events have great purses and are awesome. Yeah. But it's a PGA Tour. So that's why I don't care if you call them all PGA Tour wins. Because it's all one tour. It's all one thing. There's no weird classifications. I agree it's misleading. Yeah. I just don't get why people think that's such a heinous, ludicrous take. Yeah. It's like, I, I, I would be like, I'm trying to think if there's a good analogy for, I, you could even, I wouldn't argue it's like the same thing as like a preseason game or a regular season game. You, uh, I tried to go down. I, I tried don't know to go really down. A good analogy no, because it, it's a pretty unique thing. I tried going down the G League route because G League's owned by the NBA, and not, I was like, it's "Do not you?" The same, I, yeah, well, I, I quickly, I quickly was like, "Yeah." The more I think about it, the less it makes sense. But where my thought process was was like, the NBA owns the G League, so like technically those are NBA players, and technically okay. they're NBA it wins. It would be like it would be like here would be like the example. This is going to be kind of made up, but it's obscure. Uh, it would be like if the NBA had two seasons, uh, one season was everybody in the league and that was an NBA championship. And then there's another season and only half the teams were there and the other half were filled with like college teams. And then, then, and then they said, you, but they eat both champions are just NBA champions. Yeah. Like that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's essentially what's happening. Yeah. Oh, it's just a weird one. It is weird though. Cause it's like. It's ex- anybody can go to the silver events, but that's what I'm saying is that's all fine. Just stop telling us not to care as much about them and stop saying they're silver events then. Yeah, because if you're do, doing that, then I don't do. call it a tour event. Yeah, I, I yeah, I almost wonder if like the silver events just shouldn't be pro tours. That's thank you. That's what I'm saying. Is why are we call why are we putting less resources, <laughs> less to, energy? He's starting to brainwash me. No, people. but you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, why are we saying this doesn't matter as much, and then we're still trying to call it all tour events and say it all matters the same? Yeah, I don't know. Like, you can't tell me this matters less, and then say that they a player that. present a player's win, and like J- Jen Allen, her first pro tour win is a silver event. So she, in my opinion, doesn't have a pro tour win. I know she technically does, but yeah. you're telling us this event mattered less. This is a silver event. A show. And then you're trying to say she had won a pro tour. The same as if she wins a playoff event or an elite series plus event that you're trying to tell us matters way more. So why are you trying to tell us a bunch of different things and say, okay, but at the end of the day, it's all the same. That doesn't add up. You better check yourself, Stat Mando. Two plus two doesn't equal five. But it's mm. not on Stat Mando because if Stat Mando doesn't tweet that it's a tour event, then like they're siding with me. What do you mean? Well, they could be. They could have. They cherry picked that stat a little bit. Dead, but that's what I'm saying. I think when you're, I think when you're like in the stat game and you have to find interesting stats, and they do a great job of finding very interesting stats, you do sometimes have to lean into the, like the vagueness if you're allowed it because they're allowed the vagueness. Yeah, but that's what so. I'm saying. It's like that's not on Stat Mando. It's not on them. That's on the Pro Tour. Do better Pro Tour. Like the Pro Tour needs to like do better the silver events. They either need to all just be one tour, all just tour events, or the silver and need to not be on the pro tour. Yeah. You can give, they're giving the Euro tour is not on the pro tour and they're giving silver events out, silver points out. You can give points like can't like you can give points to whatever you want. So okay. they can say, Hey, the silver series oh. events, you can get points for the pro tour if you go to those, but here's, they're not on the pro here's tour. Something to be on your radar. If you're in the Brody Smith fan club, like us, he is now only a decimal amount of points out of the Pro Tour Championship. He's in like That's the 34th awesome. slot now, and he's like 0.6 away. That's fantastic. In the line. Isn't that crazy? Good for One him. One event like that, well, two events, two Pro Tours back-to-back like that, <laughs> they can really change things for yeah. you. Now, speaking of the Euro Tour, also, before we get to Estonian Open, the Euro Tour, this is fascinating to me. You have to pay to watch it if you want to watch live separately than Disc Golf Network. It's not ran by the Disc Golf Network, was, obviously, yeah. because remember, this is a completely separate tour. The Disc Golf Network, Disc Golf Pro Tour was like, you know what? We'll throw a few points at you. 
forgot I got pissed about that one this off season, but now I'm remembering why. Because he did. Um, but I saw UDisc was offering a discount. You had like a if you use code UDisc, you get a discount on whatever their streaming service was to watch the Euro Tour events. And I was like, that. That's interesting. How much was it? I didn't look. I didn't look into it. Mm. Estonian Open went down. This is Paul's start to his European tour. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. It started worse than I could ever possibly have imagined. I don't think, I think in our minds, we were like, dude, if Paul takes fifth out there, like, can you imagine how crazy that would be? Yeah. <laughs> he took 31st. This is the problem is he went out there and he shot tied for 31st, T31, 19 strokes off the lead in the three round event. This told us nothing. Yeah. He just played really bad. Cause like he just went out there. Like if you're wondering like, okay, ma'am, are there 30 incredible Joey Tamale, uh, the no shot at Joey Tamale's game. He could spank me, but he's a Jomez pro DG and camera guy beat Paul by three at the tournament. It's a good day for Joey Tamale. It was a great day for Joey Tamale. Shout out Joey T. But like the Joey, he's not, he's not a tour player. So like that, pretty, there's there's your context. Pretty confuzzling situation. Um, now we will say Moro Vilman uh, took took it down. Shout out to him. He beat. He now can say he beat Paul by 19 and strokes. He, he, I will say the guy who won, I think, won by six. Yeah, like, he he won. So that that that'll be something to keep an eye on. Um, even if even if Paul stinks it up on this tour, I'm gonna be watching. But closely. like this this event, I wanted to go. I wanted to see Paul like play solid, and yeah. see what that where is he. Like, I wanted to be able to watch coverage and be like, okay, yeah, no, look, Paul's on. Paul's playing solid, and he's, he's still lost. Or he's yeah. he only won by two. Like, these guys are the real deal. Yeah, he played like dude. Paul went over there and played like an MA1 guy and came in 31st. So I'm like, okay, well, for the, as of this week, we know nothing about European disc golf anymore. The mystery or, continues. Now. Um, now, on FPO, the winner, Tili Tums- Tumsalu. Okay. Um, I'm really sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, one by one after getting into the event through Monday qualifying, which is electric. Super dope. Yeah. Qualified on Monday, one on Sunday. That's sick. Very fascinating. So that's this week in disc golf. Um, let's get into a fan favorite segment, Trevor's trivia. But first, Trevor, why don't you tell us a little bit about Flippy? Maybe I don't know if these tour shirts are available yet, but they will be on Flippy Disc Golf's website here yeah. pretty soon. So Flippy Disc Golf has been a massive supporter of our tour there. The main reason that we're out here right now. Right now I'm wearing the nice shirt. This is a t-shirt that uh, is actually through the swanky line on their site. But uh, yeah, they they have awesome disc golf apparel. If you've never checked out Flippy Disc Golf Apparel before. Or it's if really you cool. have before. Yeah, or if you even have before and you have it in a while, they have new this new Soul Pro technology that is their new dry fit material that we absolutely love. It's such good dry fit. We've already been out here on tour wearing the Flippy Apparel now for quite a Let few matches. Let me show you how it works. I was just showing them the Soul Pro to no Soul Pro. Oh, I was like, what is happening? I don't right know now? if the exposure is catching my farmer's tan, but the yes. Soul Pro is working. Super cool. We've been very comfortable out here. It's been awesome. They have a ton of cool designs, polos, uh, non-polo dry fits. They've also got some windbreakers, some t-shirts. We have also have our own collection now with Flippy Disc Golf. So we're going to have this all linked in the description, but you can go on and check out designs that we worked with Flippy to kind of like uh, approve and put on our collection stuff that we wanted to wear. Some of them are West Coast inspired. We've got like a seagull pattern, a bear camo, a bear camo, which is really cool. And then the basket weave. And the basket. I don't know. Weave. I think it's called the classic polo, the, but yeah, the polo with like the basket weave pattern is awesome. So make sure you check also out some Flip- windbreakers. Yeah, the windbreakers are sick too. Make sure you check out Flippy Disc Golf. We'll have that link in the description. Description. All the apparel is amazing, perfect for disc golf, and they are a huge supporter of this tour. So thanks again to Flippy for that. And uh, all right. Trevor's trivia. trivia. I actually found a really uh, obscure thing today. We're going to do a... Um, tour event or not. <laughs> that would be funny. I've thought about doing something like that before. Uh, we're going to do the Simon Lazat quiz. Oh, boy. What? Oh, boy. Because everybody... Lo- I figured everybody loves Simon. Like, yeah. And I know Simon is a Grip Lock listener as well. So I think it'd be funny if Simon could... Um, ace his own quiz. Also, you want to know something I learned on Joe Mez today? What you learn on Joe Mez today? Um, you know how when you like watch a YouTube on your phone, you can usually see the top, very top comment peeking mm-hmm. out from the comments. They always make, I don't know if they always do this. They did it on this video, so I'm assuming it's a thing. They make the top comment spoiler shield and they like it, so they make it the top comment. That's funny. <laughs> they are invested. Uh, anyway, Simon Zot quiz. Simon, if you're listening today, play along, see if you know your own quiz. Um, there's 10 questions. Let's see how many you can get right. They're, these are not going to be easy. Okay. 
Simon Lazat's largest U.S. MPO win margin of his career was at the 2019 Newton Heck. That was it. This is the Newton Heck. How many strokes over second place did Simon win on? It's multiple choice. Was it three? Well, I mean, you should get a hint knowing this is the largest win of his career. Three, eight, 11, or 15? 11. See, I usually like that guess, but I bet it's 15. I was 11. Oh, you don't know this. You didn't make this quiz. No. Oh, <laughs> we're taking this together. Kind of, we can. Um, <laughs> I thought I thought you wrote these questions. No. Oh, okay. No, 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 no I did not. There's just a Simon quiz out there. How many? Yeah, people love him. <laughs> How many five? You think I just wrote a Simon Lazat? Yes, quiz? I thought you did. How many five plus round tournaments has Simon Lazat won, including final not five nine, plus round? As a round, if so, three, eight, thirteen, or nineteen? Three. Oh, Stat Mando did this. Three, surely. 19. How has he played so many five plus round tournaments? That man, no, you guys are dirty dogs. You're one for two. <laughs> Simon Lazad's best C1X. Also, shout out to Mando for putting doing the store, sporkle quizzes. You guys rock. Uh, but stop messing around with the Pro Tour thing. Well, actually, no, that's not your fault. It's on the not Pro Tour. Not at fault. <laughs> Simon Lazad's best C1X putting percentage in a season was 87%. Which year was this? 2017, 18, 19, or 2021? This is a good one. Oh, there could boy. be some educated guesses here. I think I have my guess. Well, I'm, I'm so I'm thinking 2021 is definitely a possibility. Uh huh. But I feel like it could be like well, no, 2021. No, I like no, 2022. 2022 is when he won all. Yeah, I like 2018. I like 2018. 2021. Freak me. <laughs> In how many events has Simon Lazat cashed one thousand dollars or higher? Thirty six, forty three, fifty nine, or sixty five? Let's just go with like C. Whatever that 59? one was. Yeah. No, D, 65. Okay. Dang it. True or false, Simon Lazat shot in a 1,110 rated round at the 2019 Memorial. This is the highest Disc Golf Pro Tour round rating of all time. Disc Golf Pro Tour? Yeah. At what year? Not 2019. True or false? 2019 Memorial? Mm-hmm. I think he won that. We're just thinking, was that a Pro Tour? Oh, for show. They alternated with Las Vegas, remember? And uh, national tours. It started 2016. It in the NT. I think it... Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to say false. That was true. Dang it! <laughs> it alternated what, with NTs back in the day. What is Simon Lazat's longest cash streak in elite series and major events? 31, 39, 49, or 57? Way longer than I thought. 39. 31. 31. Okay, well, I should have guessed that. Dang, dude. What year did Simon Lozada have 15 MPO wins, the most of his career in one year? 2010, 2013, 2015, or 2017? Not 2015. Paul won everything. Good point. 2013. I bet it's either that or 2010. 2013! Yes! Got two. At what event was Simon Lazat's best cash per throw? $28.33 per throw. 2015 Ledgestone, 2017 Glass Blown, 2018 Memorial, or 2020 Preserve. That's got to be Ledgestone. It's that Ledgestone was a bag. None of these are ones he won. Did he win Preserve in 2020? I'm pretty sure he won Ledgestone in 2015. I, th- I think he did, but I'm saying, like, what? All he, of didn't these are, the, he didn't win Preserve. All of these are more than his wins last year? Mm hmm. Uh, well, maybe, maybe well, not. No, but you gotta think cash per throw, so it could be a tournament oh, like 2018 like, Memorial where he's not throwing oh. much. 2018 Memorial. It was, it was, like it was the obvious. It one. was the obvious one. <laughs> I was like trying to go sneaky, like, oh, well, if he, in 2019, if he threw only like 40 sh- shots around. In 2019, Simon Lazat made the most C2 putts of his career. How many did he make? In what year? 70, tw- 2019. 116. Okay. Is that one of the options? That's wrong. Dang it. <laughs> I looked over your shoulder. Oh, I was like, <laughs> uh, true or false? Simon Lozada has the fifth most DGPT podiums in MPO. Elite standard events. So there you go. They they, they clarified. They didn't mislead you. First off, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to say true. True. You got three out of ten. 30%. Average baby. score is 33%. So that's so I'm about average. You're about average. Simon was not knowledge. I'm about an average. Let us know if you did any Simon, better than that. You comment down below and you let us know let what us know you, you did got. better than that. I bet you didn't. I hope you did. Because that is re- that that, that's hard. A, I wouldn't know that about myself. Yeah. If you ask me my cash per throw, I mean, well, you'd like be able to have cent. more educated. Yeah, I want to know what our best cash per throw is. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm going to calculate that. I'm going to find that. All right. Let's wrap it up with our. Um, 
I can't see how long it's been anymore because my laptop no, dude, I got went you. away. Just just a wiggle the mouse. You might have to click. Oh, you're going to... I'm at the touch face. That's, that's terrifying. Give me a second here, peeps. Yeah, while he's doing oh. that... Let me tell you Why about. Why don't you read them? Read them the grip locked standing or the power yeah, the rankings. Power rankings as they stand. Uh, MPO we have Calvin Heinberg, Gannon Burr, Eagle McMahon, Isaac Robinson, Simon Lazat, Kyle Klein, James Proctor, Nicholas Antela, Nicholas Antela, I should say, Anthony Abrella, Ricky Wysocki. And then FPO we have Chris and Tatar, Owen Scoggins. I can tell you that's not going to change. Paige Pierce, Holland Hanley, Cat Merch. Yeah. Okay. MPO wise. Calvin Heimberg played okay this weekend. He played okay. I can tell you who did play well this weekend. That's Isaac Robinson. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Where do we want to put Isaac Robinson? Spooky so season. Calvin Heimberg, he came in seventh. Who else is ahead of him? Gannon Burr he t- came he in ninth. ninth. After starting out in like seventh. Eagle years. McMahon <laughs> injured himself again. Ooh, yeah. We we got to talk, didn't even about, talk that. about that. What are we doing? Oh, my gosh, dude. Eagle McMahon re-injured his shoulder and DNF'd. He's claiming he's going to be back in a few weeks. I Okay, we talked about this a lot whenever he first got hurt. I'm really scared that Eagle McMahon needs surgery and is not getting surgery. I'm worried about that. My hot take is, and I don't even think it's that hot of a take, Eagle McMahon will never be the same. He's done. Don't be. Don't say that. I think he can win. I think he could win a tournament or two. Yeah, I don't think he'll ever be But that. he's not, he, we're injury. never going to see 100% Eagle ever again, in my opinion. Gosh. Now I'm not saying that a surgery couldn't get him there. I'm saying we're never going to see it. I don't. Th- I think if a surgery could get him there, I don't think he's going to do I'm it. Sad. I'm very sad. Yeah. Eagle. Eagle McMahon. I don't like this wounded field, man. Who is it? Greg Oden. What happened to Greg Oden? Yeah, he got. A, he never really became anything. He had knee injury. It was an injury, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think Eagle McMahon could be the Greg Oden of our sport, where he well, was Greg just Oden like never. Ro- he but well, he was in college. He was a big deal, but he never rose to prominence at the pro level. It would be like, but um, like that, that's what I'm saying. Rudy like, Gay, another Rudy Port- Gay. another Portland Trailblazers draft. Derrick pick. Rose. Derrick Rose looks like he could be dominant. MVP has a good season. Yeah, Derrick Rose is better because MVP is perfect. Really came back. Derrick Rose is perfect. I think Eagle McMahon's dip, disc golf's Derrick Rose of like Gosh, he's perfect. gonna retire that's and you're perfect. always gonna wonder what could have been. Gosh, like Derrick Rose could have been he was one the league of the, MVP. Yeah, he could have been the greatest player of our generation. Did he realistically, it? Uh, yeah, yeah, he was explosive. He had explosive. Do- <laughs> he was explosive talent. Yeah, he did. And Let's I think that uh, Eagle McMahon. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Eagle McMahon. It, it's really? a shame. I'm very upset by it because Eagle's one of my favorite players. Um, it's really Go sucks. Go ahead and say you're enraged. Really, I'm enraged. It okay. really sucks for Discmania too. Oh gosh, dude. Yeah, that's a bummer. Uh, they lost Simon, and now Eagles down for the count. Kyle Klein, it's all on you. Let's go, Kyle. Um, okay, let's see. So, what are we going to do with Isaac Robinson first? He's got to be moved up, I think. He's just uh, playing too yeah. consistent. He's fourth in the world right now. Do we just switch him and Eagle? We'll start there. Yeah, for sure. Because he, I don't think he jumps Gannon or, or Calvin. He's he's nipping at Gannon's heels right now. He oh. has won a major this season. That's what I'm saying. He, I would, I would not be. Is Isaac Robinson the best, second best player in the world? And we're just sleeping on him. Isaac Robinson right now is dirty. He's dirty, man. He's so accurate. What did Gannon do? So what did Gannon do at OTB? Because Isaac, him, Isaac almost messed around and run that thing, didn't he? Isaac be doing that all the time now. Gannon Bird did come in 21st at a silver event. It's trash. I don't really know how much to factor. Gannon Bird came in second at OTB. Yes. Isaac right. Robinson oh, came in third. Right. Isaac right. came in third. So they were Cuties. neck and neck. Calvin yeah. Heimberg came in six. Is Calvin the number one player in the world still? Calvin is starting to slip, which is like, I mean, it's hilarious because he's not like he's like doing anything true. Right. I, think we're, I think I'm okay with Calvin Gannon and Isaac right now. I think I'm okay with that one, two, three okay. punch. We'll keep it there. Eagle four, Simon five right now is where we're at. Simon took a pretty decent finish. He was mm-hmm. right. He, I think he did. I think he was like not far behind Brody at one point. You're at OTB. I'm OTB still. Yeah. Okay, I was going to say, what? I think um, he wasn't super far behind Brody. I don't think he did great, though. 17th. Yeah, that's not that's not awful. Considering, like, well, I mean, Ricky had a better him. finish. Kyle Klein is next. Ricky's in 10th right now in the world. Yeah, he can jump a little bit. Ricky did win a silver. Also, look, but who, now he's Ezra in, just he had another ninth. good finish. Ezra scares me. Well, he had a bad, like, remember he was in there? We, no, he bumped then, Ezra out. We, yeah, but now I'm just saying he had, another, he had a big good finish now. So, like, what is that going to do? Mm-hmm. That's what, that's on us. I'm scared. This is a, this, this is really hard now. These power. Ricky Wysocki, I think, is a better player than Anthony Barella. 
What did AB do at this event? 11th. Ricky came in 9th. Where did Nicholas Antelope? Is Nicholas back in Europe? Might be. He might have already well, started his European swing. Gosh, I hope No, so. he did not. He finished in 78th. See ya. Uh oh. All right, so we made room in the top ten. Nicholas Antle outside the top ten. You can't finish. <laughs> you can't finish in seventy eighth and hold on to your, top, to your eighth place spot. It's not like we're bumping him for first. That is true. That's tough scenes for Nicholas. Okay, so tenth we put Ezra Ader hold back. I don't know. That's I just did. Um, Ricky Wysocki's in ninth right now. Do we want to move him? Did we close? bump out the proctologist? No, no he's, he's in there. seventh. Okay. So after Simon, if we're fine leaving Simon in five, we have Kyle Klein six. Where would Klein do this one? Kyle I feel Klein like Kyle should have done pretty good at this one. He Is he there. not there? Maybe not. Okay, I'm gonna start back over the top. Please tell me he Kyle? wasn't there. Kyle. Hmm. If he was there, it's not gonna be good for him. No, it's sorted by alphabetic word. He DNF'd. Sure. He round one DNF. Oh gosh, Kyle hurt. Possible. Well, yeah, nine nine nine. Well, yeah, but I mean that could, could be say he could have got food poisoning. Could have been anything. But don't worry, I'm on the job. You get on that. So Kyle Klein, non-factor for the power rankings. Um, James Proctor, we have in seventh right now, and he came in fifth. Yeah, you he did. He's well. having himself a season. He did well. Good He's for him. A B. We just said came in 11th. Ricky, we bumped up to 9th. I'm guessing it has to do with his back because he said his back was feeling better. Like with He skipped Milo for that. So Kyle Klein injured. Eagle McMahon injured. It's low. He's having lower back issues. Disc, team Discmania? Discmania injured right now. Oh, my gosh. They're in trouble right That's now. That's not good. Yeah. Okay, well... I think we got so we have James Proctor in seventh. Can we have a hospital power rankings? Sure. Eagle one, Kyle Klein two right now. Yeah. Ricky Wysocki, ten to third place. No, he's he's healthy right now. He's playing good golf. Yeah, but ghost third. Ghost third, yeah. He'll be back. Um do we leave do we leave Ricky in nine? A B played was two spots behind him. Proctor he's been beat him. Really good this year. He just isn't really messing up a lot. I think we're good here. I'm happy with this list. Okay, well, let's, look at it. let's look at it. Let's make sure we're not missing anybody. Okay, let's look just at look the it standings. Up. Aaron Gossage. Do we need to start factoring in the Goose Man? Let's look at the Goose. Oh, it's kind of turning it on. He, so, elite series-wise, he got third at OTB, 23rd yeah. at Jonesboro, 57th at Champions Cup, 17th at Music City. He hasn't I don't been, think he hasn't so. been, like, making any... I don't think so. Any fireworks or anything. Okay. It probably, I mean, he might be, he might be able to beat Ezra out for 10th. But I don't know. Is there anyone else that we're overlooking? Corey Ellis. I feel like I haven't heard that name much this year. I could be wrong. Click on Corey Ellis really quick. Cause I feel like he's been a little quiet, but mm, yeah, yeah no. not, some not great stuff in there. Okay. Um, all right. I think we Alden Harris. You mean just look at him real quick? Yeah, he had a not good start to the season. I don't think. But he's been doing. He's okay been doing though. okay recently. Yeah. Alden Harris is one to keep our our eyes on. All right, eyes, I don't think he's there yet. Eyes are on Alden. Eyes are on Alden. All so eyes on Alden. Calvin one, Gannon two, Isaac three, Eagle four, Simon five, Kyle Klein six, James Proctor seven, AB eight, Ricky Wysocki nine, Ezra Ader hold ten. Let us know in the comments where we we're messing up. Um, FPO <laughs> one two definitely aren't changing. One two aren't changing. Three's not changing. Probably not. Probably mm, Holland Cat is the other is the questions. Yeah. Let's answer some questions. Um, Cap Merch, that is. Cyananda could could sneak in there. Yeah, we need to start looking at Cyananda. I think I think Holland Hanley might need to get bumped. Twenty first place. Oh gosh. Cyananda has, I mean, tenth at OTB. She hasn't played many. Open at Austin. She's. 20, so back to op, since open at Austin, she has to finish outside the top ten Let's at a full pro tour. There. Let's sneak her in there. Sayananda. I, I think we go cat merch up to fourth. I'll okay. look at what cat did, and I think we. Um, oh my. Oops. All right, and then Cy. In a great Nanda. name. Sayananda. All right, let's just look, let's look at what cat merch did. Out there. I feel like she did bad. Thirteenth. Okay. Uh. Okay, but let's look at the names above her. Jessica Weiss. Click on Missy. Let's make sure we're not missing out on Missy here. 
because she's been around for a little bit now. Back to Ooh. fifth place, tenth place, seventeenth. But Cat Mersh has a win. She does. At All right, well, Jonesboro. Yeah. Respect, I respect the win. So I think we gotta respect the win. Respect. All it. right, Kristen one, own two, page three, Cat four, Cat Mersh that is sign on to five. That's our top five. That's the power rankings. That's the episode. And if you're wondering, in case it wasn't obvious, yes, we recorded this in a hotel bed. We'll talk to you next week. Yes, next week.